This Wuthering Waves team is by far one of the easiest teams to build and the best part about this team is that you get this team completely for free at the start of the game. The team consists of Rover, Yang Yang and Baija. So in this video I'll show you how the team works and I'll give you a short guide on how to build each of the characters for your playstyle. With that said, let's get into the video. Some of you may have noticed that I actually made a mistake with Baija close to the ending. I will explain what that mistake was for those of you who didn't catch what the mistake is, but for now, let's actually get into the build of the characters. In this team, Rover is the main DPS, and I have him at the maximum level that I can reach right now, which is level 60, as I am at Union level 30. And he has the Commando of Conviction. I got this weapon from the free 4-star weapon selector, and I also put him on the Spectral Damage Echo set. Now, the main stats that Rover needs are mostly attack, heavy attack damage, basic attack damage, and crits. These are the main things that he needs, and these are the things that I tried to couple together for him. Now, my Rover is not built but even though he's not built he's still able to dish out a lot of damage to deal with enemies in the open world and I also basically have his entire skill tree maxed now let's move on to Yang Yang now for this team there were two main things that I wanted Yang Yang to do one is that I wanted her to become a DPS character when fighting enemies that were immune to spectral damage like the spectral prisms and I also wanted Yang Yang to serve as a support character for funneling energy into the rover because I didn't build a rover with energy, which you typically would want to do if you were doing a meta team comp. So in this team, Yang Yang is a sub DPS character and as you can also tell from screen, she is also unbuilt. I have her at level 40 and I just recently switched her to a 4 star weapon that I got from the gacha which is also an attack weapon but previously she was using a 3 star attack weapon. I have her on the arrow damage echo set and I've only leveled her basic attack and her forte circuit. Those are the only two things that I've been focusing on but you can upgrade other things and I'll talk about those things later on in the video. For right Right now, let's talk about Baija. Baija only exists for healing, like that's the only thing and left to me, I would not even level her up from level 1, I would just leave her there. But because I want to also level up her skill tree, I'm also considering leveling her up to level 40 as well with Yang Yang. And the main things that I want to focus on are her resonance skill and her resonance liberation because those are the two main sources of healing that we have for her. Now for Baija, there are two sets you can use. You can use the healing set or you can use the energy regen set. I personally think that the energy set is better for her because the healing set will give you 10% healing bonus but if you level your Baija enough, you will get a lot of healing bonus from her skill tree. So I don't think there is a need for the healing set. The energy set is a lot better and if you max out the energy set, you can also give attack to the rover or to Yang Yang, any one of the characters that you swap into from your concerto skill. So for Baija, what I have is a 3 star energy regen rectifier and like I said before, I'm working towards upgrading her resonance skill and her resonance liberation. Now while I show you the character builds, let me actually make some notes. Now for all of your characters, you want to go for 5 star echoes but at the beginning of the game, you will not be able to get 5 star echoes. So at the beginning of the game, whether it's a 2 star echo, 3 star echo or a 4 star echo, try to just go for attack 
on everybody. For Baija, go for energy region. When you get to five star echoes, that's when you need to start worrying about crit damage, crit rate, and all of the other things that I mentioned for all of the characters. Also, for the echoes, you want to go for the 43311 one boss enemy, two elite enemies, and two common enemies. And on screen, I'll show you guys how to be able to find the different enemies for the sets that you're looking for. And right now, I don't think there's anything I'm forgetting, so I'll move on to showing you guys how the rotation of the team works. If there's anything I forgot, I will include it at the ending of the video. Now, the way that I do the team rotation for this team is actually quite simple. The rover will start off with basic attacks and they will try to build up their forte circuit. And one of the fastest ways to build up the forte circuit for the rover is to do a charge attack, which is press and hold the attack button and then do some regular attacks right afterwards. The rover will do this animation where he's pulling something back and then you get 50 points for your forte circuit. Now, when you get your forte circuit, all you just need to do is do your E. You continue to do this simple rotation until you hear the chime for your concerto energy, which means that you have enough concerto energy to switch to another character. From here, you have two options. Now, the first option is to switch to Yang Yang. If you switch to Yang Yang, you can then start to do her own basic attacks. And you also want to build up her own forte circuit as well. Now, it's optional to use her forte skill right afterwards. You can decide to ignore that because the main reason why you're switching to Yang Yang is to switch back into the rover when you hear the chime again to switch to the next character. So you switch back to the rover and then the rover will start to gain energy for their ultimate. So their energy, so their ultimate bar will fill up a lot faster. Now, the second option is for when the rover's health is low, you can then then switch to Baija and then do some basic attacks with Baija to fill up her forte circuit. Then do her resonance skill and her resonance liberation if you have a resonance liberation. And this is actually the mistake that I made in the showcase. I forgot that I didn't have any stacks of concentration for Baija and I just did her resonance skill which did not heal any of my characters at all. So that that was just a little oopsie on my end, but it worked out well, so it doesn't really matter. So a summary of the rotation, basic and charge attack with the rover to build up forte circuit, switch to yang yang when you hear the chime, do basic attacks with yang yang until you hear the chime again, and then you can switch back to the rover, do your ultimate and start over. Or if rover and or yang yang's health is low, you can switch to baija, heal them and then switch back and then start the original rotation. As of right now, with the amount of knowledge that I have about the game, the only character in this entire team that you cannot swap out is Yang Yang because of the energy regen that she gives to the team. Every other character being Rova and Baija can be swapped out. So let's talk about the potential swaps you could do. For Baija, you can switch her out with Verena. And if you get Verena in the team, the team is already pretty crap. Because Verena right now is the best healer in the game. And the best part is that she's also very easy to build. All you just need on her is a lot of attack because the more attack she has, the more healing she can do and energy regen so she can be able to get her ultimate as fast as possible. You can add in other things, but personally, these two stats are the most important things for you. Apart from Verena, I really don't think you should be worried about any other character at the moment because if you have skill issue and you are getting knocked around a lot, you need a healer. So these two healers will save your life in a pinch, especially if you have Verena. Now, for the DPS character, Rover, you can switch out the Rover with another DPS character, but I want to preface it and say that you may not be getting the best out of that character's kit. And I would highly recommend that if you want your main DPS to be another character, look into getting a better team for them. But if you don't care about meta and you just want a team that could work, you could brute force it, but I personally don't think you should. But you can switch out the rover for Jian, you can switch out the rover for Sanwa. Basically, any character that is a DPS or a sub DPS can work as a replacement for the rover. But like I said before, you may not be getting the best out of your kit. And I would highly recommend that you bring out a better team for that character. 
As some of you may have noticed, this team is not meant to be a meta team. And another thing to note is that I don't have full knowledge of everything in the game at the moment. So some of the things that I presented in this video may be wrong. They may get changed further down the line. And if they do, I'll try to make an updated video on this topic. Now, before I end of the video, let me give a few tips to beginners who are trying to use this team. The first tip is to always make sure that your DPS character is at the maximum level that they can possibly be. And for the other characters, I will always recommend that Yang Yang should be at least 10 to 20 levels below the rover. And Baija, you can stop leveling her when you get to level 40 out of 50 or 50 out of 60. The reason why I say stop at level 40 out of 50 or 50 out of 60 is because you want to level up the skill tree of Baija to unlock some of the healing bonus and the other things that she can get from the skill tree. Keeping Yang Yang at least 10 to 20 levels below the rover will make it so that it's easier for you to be able to manage your resources but still have a character that is strong enough to be able to deal damage in place of the rover if you cannot use the rover. I've used this team to challenge the Tower of Adversity as you can see on screen. The only floor of the stable zone that I was not able to clear with 3 stars at first was the final floor because my rover was still not built. And on screen, if I'm able to do it, I will show you guys me trying to clear it with a level 60 rover and a level 50 yang yang. Another thing to note is the weapons of the character should always be at the same level as the characters to just make your whole life a lot easier. And I already mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but make sure that when you are starting out the game, when you're still getting two star echoes, three star echoes, four star echoes, that all you're focusing on getting is either double attack or HP and attack. You don't need to worry about getting other things until you get to a rank five echo. Technically, you can start to worry about it at a rank four echo, but there's really no need to invest into a rank 4 echo when you can get a rank 5 echo. Rank 5 echoes are 5 star echoes. The same goes for 4 stars. But with all that said, I really hope this video has helped someone out there. And I want to remind you guys that a good team is not a substitute for skill. If you don't know how to play the game, if you don't know how to dodge, if you don't understand attack patterns and the rest of them, you will still die no matter how good your team is. So try to learn the main basics of the game. So with all that said, subscribe for Watering Waves, guide videos, lore videos, and some other kinds of videos that I will try to make. Also follow me for Project Mugen and Azure Promilia news whenever we start to get news on those games. And with all that said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace guys.